the CD to us, really. Yeah, so really pleased for the, the five guys who have uh, decided to uh, extend their stay with us. Obviously, Jake Patmore um, hurt his knee during the off-season, so probably hasn't been able to you know, show his true wares, although you know, we thought he did some stuff that was pretty good you know, during the off-season. Uh, Joel's obviously you know, a player who hasn't looked out of place when he's played at AFL level, and you know, clearly there's been some excitement around those other three, you know, Rosie, Dersmer and Butters. So, uh, rap that um, all of them have uh, decided to extend their stay. Is that an easy process for, I suppose, the higher profile trigger? Yeah, w w I think we always said that you know, we thought that there wouldn't be any problems. Obviously, those guys are um, you know, playing pretty good footy in, in what is a competitive team. So, I can't imagine they would have wanted anything else from the club when you know, we called their names out. So, you know, as I say, really pleased. You know, and don't don't miss Joel and, and Jake as well because we think they've got uh, futures with the club too. Mate, the, um, <laughs> the decision at the end of last season, obviously, <coughs> you made some big calls. You know, you, you, you draft, traded the three first round draft picks, one of them was obviously right. Um, and also brought in Lysette and Burton and shipped other players out. Um, what did you think about that? Has that been justified, what you've seen this year? Obviously, the talent of the younger guys and also. Class of group. Yeah, I think ultimately time will tell with that, but you know, we brought Lysett in for a specific reason, and that was you know, we wanted to uh, have additional you know, ruck depth in our, in our team, and obviously he's played some really good footy so far this year, so we've been um, wrapped with his input. You know, Burton was someone that you know, we'd shown interest in over time, so uh, again, pleased that he came to the club, but you know, uh, those three that you've mentioned, you know, Dursma, Rosie and Butters, they certainly brought a significant amount of energy to the group, which, is, which has been fantastic. So it's not just about talent alone. Um, you know, it's about what, um, what they bring from an energy perspective and, and also the team cohesion. So we're, we're wrapped with where we're at at the moment. So right now you're very happy with what the moves you made in the last year? Yeah, we are. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, we, you know, we hoped that we would get um, so, you know, an outcome like we have, but as I say, time will tell ultimately with all of those decisions. It's not an unusual rule, so if signing those guys on, there aren't guys that are going to drop off. So do you have to make some more moves? I mean, bigger moves at the end of the season, similar moves where you have to move. No, we, we've got no issues from a cap perspective or anything like that. We can, um, yeah, we'll, we'll be players at the end of the year, I'm sure, but we can we can make decisions. We probably um, feel in some way vindicated for some of the decisions that we've made. Um, you know, as I say, time will tell in terms of whether they're good or not, but. They're not going to have an impact on um, our salary cap or anything like that. Are you surprised at how obviously you rated those three first round picks very high? <coughs> Are you surprised at how quickly they adapted to AFL and how much footy that they played between them, senior footy this year? It's very rare to get three guys to play so much footy in the first year. Yeah, I think that's fair, Andrew. You know, we, we brought them into the club thinking that they would play some footy this year. Uh, there's no doubt that all of those guys have exceeded our expectations to this point. Um, you know, I also knew that Kem was going to be willing to play them, so they were going to get an opportunity, but you know, they've certainly showed that, um, that they have the ability to, to have long careers in the AFL. Um, you know, right now we're wrapped with their input this year. Um, and uh, you know, I expect that, uh, you know, that they'll be good Port Adelaide footballers for a long time to come. Just further across this point about future contracts, obviously, the Sample at the moment, you've got Hayes and Frampton, and um, obviously Adams playing there. Uh, I think all those three are out of contract with other clubs, probably having a look at them. Is, where does that sit on your contract agenda moving forward? Uh, we're, we're happy with our ruck depth at the moment. Um, yeah, we don't think we've got too many, so if we wanted to go down the path of keeping all of those guys, then you know, I imagine that'll be something that'll be discussed over the next you know, period of time between now and the end of the year. Um, the development has been fantastic. You know, to see Laddams um, you know, come forward this year, to see Sam Hayes return, you know, we've got some real high hopes for Sam. Um, and obviously, you know, Paddy's found himself out of the team over the last couple of weeks, but uh, at the same time, Ken is you know, certainly on record as saying that he wants to continue to look at you know, playing two rucks. So. Um, you know, the five that we've got on the list, you know, we think is probably the right number. Would it be hard to hold them all, given the fact that other clubs have <clears> a couple of them? 
Well, I think there comes a time in every player's career where he needs to have a look at you know, what he wants to achieve and whether he's willing to um, be um, in, a, in an SNFL team, as an, as an example, you know, when he wants to play at AFL level or, or not getting a, you know, a go at AFL level. So you know, we understand that players have that opportunity to make whatever decision they want. But uh, you know, uh, Pete Labins has played some footy this year. Um, you know, we've got, as I say, Paddy, who's played a significant amount of footy and, and you know, we think still will play um, a significant amount of footy for us in the future. And we've got some guys who are developing really well at uh, SNFL level. So um, having you know, five or so on the list is not a bad thing. You know, we think we've managed them pretty well. Um, but as I say, time will tell. It's amazing because a little while ago you were struggling for the men and you've got five, I guess, that you'd be happy to play. And that's the, that's the up and down, isn't it, of... of uh, lists and injury and, and those types of things. But, uh, um, you know, managing them at SNFL level, you know, Matt Logan has done a pretty good job so far of getting, you know, th- you know three and certainly even Billy into the ruck at various points in time. So that'll be something that we've got to manage into the future. Where's the club at Christmas specifically with Paddy and a possible extension? Or where's that sitting? Uh, well, as I say, we'll discuss that, you know, in the remainder of the year. Um, you know, if, if Paddy's got some options, he needs to look at those just as much as, um, obviously, um, you know, us wanting him to stay here. You know, we're well aware that these types of things happen, but, um, you know, as Ken said, and I think as Paddy said, you know, he came here to be a, a long-term Port Adelaide player. We don't expect there to be any, any different to that. So being in all Australia, Park, you get the feeling that his role or understanding what his role would be going forward, will that have a decent role in negotiations? Uh, sorry, we'll go, so go knowing his role from a, in the team going forward, how big a factor do you think that will play in his decision? Oh, look, I, I imagine it'll be a factor, and there's a whole heap of different factors that go into the, the player's decision making. Um, you know, Scott has been our number one ruck over the last couple of weeks, but as I say, you know, Ken has wanted to play two rucks. If there's two rucks in the team, they've got to spend some time forward as well. Um, so that will be you know, whoever is the second ruckman in the team. That'll be the um, the reality of the position that they've got to be able to occupy. They've got to be able to go into another spot on the ground. Do you expect Paddy to be here this year? Yeah, I think we've said that all along. I mean, there's no reason why um, Paddy right now won't be in the team at some point you know, pretty shortly. So uh, uh, he's done fantastically well going back to the SNFL and just dominating games. So uh, you know, I imagine that he's put himself in a good spot to be recalled at some point. So is it realistic if they keep all five? Is that realistic if you could keep all five? Well, I didn't see we've we've kept all five this year. I don't see any reason why we're we're happy with their development. We all we think that they're all getting um, you know, good opportunities either at AFL or SNFL level. So um, you know, some of those decisions will be taken out of our hands. We understand that, but um, yeah, you know, right now we're as I say we're, we're happy with the level of depth that we've got from a ruck perspective. And as you say, as you said earlier, Andrew, yeah, the reality is these things can change pretty quick. And it was probably what four or five weeks ago I reckon where we where we rucked. Um, you know, one of the guys on our SNFL contract list at SNFL level. So you go from having that to having the depth that we do, we're, we're pleased with that. Um, but you can't have too many good players on your list. Teddy, what did you make of the untrustworthy, unreliable sort of <coughs> narrative around your playing group? Oh, I think when you're, when you're up and down with your performance, that they're the types of things that you know, people have an opportunity to, to label you with. Um, you know, I think Ken has backed that up by saying it's you know, we're not looking at you know, years past, we're looking at this season. You know, clearly we've got an opportunity this week to, to look to, um, to change some of that narrative, but you know, ultimately I don't think that will be done until we can you know, win a, you know, a good number of games on the trot. Um, but you know, we think we're moving forward as a list as well, so that's important. It's not just about um, you know, winning games in a row, although you know, that's obviously a really key element of it, but we, we think our list is getting better, and that's, uh, that's also a good sign. Was it a surprise to hear Ken say they are untrustworthy and unreliable and Monty to say if he doesn't buy into talk, <coughs> they're untrustworthy and unreliable? Oh, um, I think that, uh, that those guys have their own views. Um, you know, I speak to Ken regularly, so no, it wasn't a surprise. Um, uh, you know, I think that in some respects he was trotting out exactly what you guys have been saying. So um, there's only one way to change all of those things, and that's to um, yeah, continue to get better and win games. Koshi said finals or bust for the footy club. Finals is the past, mate. What do you interpret bust meaning? What are the consequences? Oh, I haven't heard David saying that, but we, we've got a, an expectation that we want to play in finals every year. So uh, 
um, that's our challenge. You know, we, we put ourselves in a good spot last year. We weren't able to get it done. Um, you know, we've got an opportunity now. <coughs> Excuse me, we've got an opportunity now in between now and the rest of the year to uh, to give ourselves a chance in finals. Um, but you know, right now we can't look any further than Brisbane, and that's that's our coaching and our, our playing staff challenge. So the gym and saying finals or bust as head of the footy department, does bust mean a change in personnel, a change in coaches, structure? Um, we, we change things every year. I mean, we, we've we've got, you know, what is it, six or seven new players in the team. So, um, you know, you, you, you might want to talk about um, changes in personnel. The reality is that that happens all the time. So um, whether we you win or lose, you change the people who are around, either from a playing staff or a, or a staff perspective. So, um, yeah, as I say, we're, we're really focused on Brisbane. But at the same time, we, you know, as a club, we want to play in, play in the finals, and we make no bones about that. Just, just, on, this, couple, just on list management again, you <coughs> talked about the, tool, the tools you've got, or the ruck options you've got. But um, are you at a stage where you have to seriously look at trying to find another forward, given Charlie Dixon's? Injury and that—that sort of exposed that you need another option up Oh, we think we've got a couple on our list who are, as I say, going pretty well from a development perspective. Billy Frampton has played as a forward all year and, and has done some you know, good things at SNFL level. He's kicked multiple goals at AFL level. Um, we've got Todd Marshall, who you know, probably played his one of his better games this year on the weekend uh, against West Adelaide in the SNFL. So. There's not so many forwards in the competition who are Charlie Dixon-like forwards. Um, so, you know, it'll be less about finding a, a replacement for Charlie and more about making sure that we continue to create some depth from uh, a tall forward type perspective. Just how do you update to folk and <coughs> expect them to play? I don't know what else is going to happen. Yeah, I mean, we've. Uh, this is this is actually one thing that annoys me is the, is the counting of players on the on the track. Yeah, you know, we've got guys who are managed no matter what it is throughout the week and, and they'll be managed whether it be a gym session or you know a session on the on the oval so but as you say um, we expect Trav to play we expect Scotty to play we expect Dougal to play there's there's no issues with uh, with uh, with those guys. Talk persist in Melbourne about <coughs> being linked to Carlton can you get the number on this? I think Ken did that this morning saying you know he doesn't know where that comes from and you know if some of us mischievous or if um, you know, guys just throwing different names out there. Um, I imagine that whoever it is that needs a coach will be um, doing the ring around to multiple people, but, you know, Ken's 100% committed to, to our footy club. You know, he's, he's said that multiple times now. So, um, you know, I, I would like to think that we can put that to bed. What sort of conversations have you had with Ken about him? Has he come to you and just gone... I have I have conversations with Ken all all the time about a whole multitude of things, and um, he gets really annoyed when these types of questions are asked. And he wanted me to come in here today and be absolutely really clear with you all to say um, that it annoys him when his name is thrown up um, in situations where there's um, you know a mischievous sort of nature behind it. Ken's 100% committed to the Port Adelaide Football Club. So mischievous? Do you think people are just mm -hmm. making this up? Oh, well, I mean. Who knows? I, you know, as I say, I think that uh, any club right now who's looking for a coach will do the ring around. We understand that. Um, but any suggestion that, uh, that Ken is not 100% committed to Port Adelaide is, is absolutely wrong. Don't call the bosses. Sorry? Don't call the bosses. Oh, who knows? I mean, they're, they're all the things that uh, the clubs that need coaches will, will go through, I'm sure.